Welcome to Outreach Connection, focusing on topics and issues that reach our communities with the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Hello and welcome to Outreach Connection. My name is Sherry McDaniel and thanks so much for tuning into the program today. We have another great program we do each and every week and I want to encourage you to, to, excuse me, to stay tuned because you're going to enjoy this. But before we get to the mission that we want to talk about today, let's hear from the Word of God and that's found in 1 John 3.18 that says, Dear children, let us not love with words and speech, but with actions and in truth. And each and every week we bring that scripture to you and each and every week that that just gets bigger inside of me because those are Jesus's words and and did you notice he said dear children Jesus isn't talking to himself there he's talking to us his children and he's saying yes it's important to tell people how much God loves them but we need to also show them how much he loves them. And so today, that's what we're going to hear about on the program. Going and showing and telling the, into the world how much God loves people. And I want you to join with me in welcoming to our program today, Bonnie Furness from Fowler, Illinois. And she's going to share with us about a recent mission trip that she was on. Bonnie, welcome. Thank you for having me. It is so good to have you here. Now, you and your husband have both been on programs before here at WTJR. Yes. Um, John's been on Pastor Speaks. You've been here on Outreach Connection before. But for the folks at home, the, the five that may have missed those, just share with the folks at home a little bit about you and your family. Um, John and I have been married 16 years, mm -hmm. and not only has he been on Pastor Speaks, but he has a TV show called The Simple Truth yes. here on the station. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been going a couple of years. Um, he teaches Bible study, and um, we have uh, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, just like everybody else, and uh, love them, and just enjoy sharing the Word with God, Amen. of God. Amen. Isn't, aren't those grandbabes something? Yes. They're just wonderful. They're you wonderful. You go right ahead and brag all you want <laughs> Now, Bonnie, I, I said that you have been on a recent mission trip, mm -hmm. but that began many, many years ago from a young man that you met over in Moberly, Missouri. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, my best friend's husband decided to go back to college, you know, and when he got <laughs> over there, uh, Salonika Dolphy was there. He had come up from Haiti to go to, to Bible college, and uh, they were the two old men in the dorm. <laughs> And they were set on <laughs> studying, you know, not the, this, this, yes. the, you know, they were studying. They were there to, to, to learn what they needed to learn and get done so that they could get on with God's business. Amen. Amen. And so I met him um, through that program. I was sewing for the college at the time for their Christmas program every year. And he did... Um, Solonique did was one of the kings in our Christmas play. Oh, so, fun. you know, kind of met him that way and got to interact with him as, as I was doing costumes and whatnot. And um, just started, uh, you know, supporting him every mm -hmm. once in a while. Take him out to dinner, sure. say, oh, you know, here, yeah. take this home, and, uh, mm -hmm. and helping him out that way. So that's been over 20 years ago uh -huh. that, that I got to meet him. Uh -huh. Now, he had a call on his life. He did. And um, originally he was an attorney in Haiti. Okay. And um, he was also an interpreter, and uh, an evangelist went down, and, and he was assigned to him, Fred Green. And uh, Fred told him, "You've got a call on your life." And he's like, "No, no, I'm going to be an attorney. I got, you know, I've got, <laughs> I've got plans." And uh, the next year, Fred got down there, and Solnik was assigned to him again. <laughs> A divine appointment. And Fred's like, you have a calling on your life. And finally, Solonik said, okay, you're right. And um, came up here to go to school to become a minister. And the, the, you know, way God works things out, he has used his lawyer training so many times to help the mission now because he knows what to do and how the law works. Uh -huh. You know, it's a very obviously God planned it that way. Amen. Go and become an attorney Amen. first and now I yeah. need you to to teach my and lead my people. And the mission is called Living Water Christian Mission. In Ghana, Eve, Haiti. In Ghana, Eve, Haiti. Now, tell us a little bit about the community in Haiti. Um, Haiti is a large port city. Um, over 300,000 people. Um, and of course, Haiti is is an extremely poor country. Mm -hmm. But um, 
I go down there, I stay at Solonique's house, and uh, they have four churches right now, and they're building a fifth church. Each church has a school because he thinks that, you know, Solonique is not only wanting godly leaders for the future, but educated godly Amen. leaders Amen. to help that country, he, you know, pull them up out of that poverty by education. Mm -hmm. And um, so they're, they're working toward that. We have... Um, 800 students in our main school, and we have a total of, through all the different schools, of over 1,300 students. Oh, Bonnie, how wonderful. That so, and, and the uh, Living Water Schools has one of the highest grade averages on the, they have a national test every year. You have to, you have to pass, pass mm -hmm. a government test in order to graduate from mm -hmm. high school, in order to graduate up, and we have some of the highest scores because we have the most dedicated teachers, you know, and, and students that are, are learning to so there's something change the country. So there's something Colossians 3 that tells us to do everything is unto the Lord. Yes, ma'am. And, you know, that is, that is bringing God's love and his wisdom mm -hmm. to people. So how many trips have you made to Haiti, and when um, did you make your first one? I've made four trips. This uh -huh. year was my fourth trip, and I've made one every year in a row. So the last four years, I've I been see. down to Haiti, and I usually spend um, three or four weeks down there when I go. And amazing. And we're, throughout the broadcast, folks are going to be able to see some pictures of, of what you, you know, what God assigned to you. So let's talk about that assignment. Uh, it, it, this program, if it's not, if it's done anything, it's that it's just shown me how much more bigger than, than our God is than we think. God can take a hundred people with a hundred different talents and use them in a hundred different ways, mm -hmm. and all for His glory and to share His love. So, what, what, how does, what did God send you with? Today? Well. You know, I met Solonique because I was sewing for the college, uh -huh. and I love to sew, and it's it's something that, that not only do I love to do, but I'm not good to brag, but yes. I am good at yes. it. It is a gift God has given me. Yes, ma'am. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so I went down on the first trip because uh, Solonique had asked me to be on the board of directors, and I was like, I need to know. I need to have been there. Yes. So I went down, and then it was like, okay, so now what can I bring to the mission. What can wow. I help with? What can I do? So and it was like, I sew. And I, so I asked Solonique, I said, would sewing classes? And he's like, oh, they would love it, you know. Mm -hmm. So I proceeded to get some sewing machines together and got several people to help get them in country and then went down. And the first year, I was the second year I went down there then, um, started a sewing program. And now I go down each year and, and teach sewing. And it's, it's a, Wonderful way to connect with the ladies. Um, I have a sewing class in the morning, three hour class in the morning, a three hour class in the afternoon. And then on Saturdays, I teach like 10, 11, 12 year old girls. How awesome. So, so we have, a, you know, just a wonderful time. And it's just, we laugh, we interact, we fellowship, and they, you know, we love each other. Yeah. You, know, you know, and my, they're learning something. Yes, Jesus was about relationship. Wasn't he? Mm -hmm. That's that's what this whole thing is about. But it was also about sharing that love, and and so through the gift that God had given you, that you're able to share God's love and build relationships. I heard mm -hmm. you say that more than that once. In that yeah. fellowship, to have that fellowship, and that's so important because you know you're thinking, okay, who cares about me? Is yes. the question. You know. Yes. Um, the uh, sewing room's on the screen right now, uh -huh. and that's just them taking the time to learn their machines and me saying, and part of the time I don't even have an interpreter. You know, uh. you pin this and this <laughs> together and say, run it through the machine, and it works. It we, works. We figure yes. it out, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just, um, like you said, that personal touch. You know, yeah, I could send mm -hmm. stuff down there and never be there, but there's no connection with that. There's no love, mm -hmm. you know, and God wants us to do everything in love that we do. Amen. And, and so sharing of yourself, I think, is one of the best ways to show that love. Amen. You know, it's not just, oh, send some cash down there and forget about it, you know, which that's needed that's too. Needed. That's, yes. I'm not saying that's yes. not needed, mm -hmm. but it's just not what God has put on my heart mm -hmm. to want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so I go down and, and teach the sewing. Um, I'm in the process of trying to get a permanent sewing room set up so that we can hire a teacher and have a teacher all year round. Mm -hmm. um, 
because the ladies learn sewing. Every school in the country has a uniform, and those all have to be sewn, mm -hmm. and you know, just personal clothing and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it's something that they can can learn to do for themselves. They can do for each other. They can do for somebody else. They can make some money. Exactly. You know, so God has it. a plan and a purpose for all of this, and and the folks at home they're getting to see the pictures, but. The projects and the smiles on their faces, you know, the girls they feel with the so purses and the dresses. Yes. You know, it's yeah. a, it's a, a, a confidence building, self esteem building um, experience that, that, oh, I made this. You know, mm -hmm. I took, took a square of material and now look what I have. You know, and not only that, but a new dress. Yeah. You know, in a country as poor as Haiti is, a brand new dress. Is a huge deal. I mean, some of them have never had a new dress before, and, this, and now it's something they've made themselves, and they have that pride. And they have that pride in wow. it. Wow! What an amazing gift. So, to be able so to it's them. just you know different layers of building things. Uh, you know, their their confidence and the love relationship, and just that love showing them Jesus. I'm here because I love Jesus loves you, and I love you, and and what can we do together? Amen. Now, some of the pictures that the folks at home aren't seeing is like, this was a process. And you had pictures of the shopping where you went for the materials and then you had the patterns laid out. And so this, this wasn't like going to a scene or a fabric store here no, in the States. No, it, Bonnie? no, no. Um, shopping in Haiti is quite an experience. Um, shopping day or... or you know, is is everything comes out into the streets. You can barely get <laughs> through the streets. You buy material in one store. You buy thread in another store. Zippers is on another corner of the thing. So it's several. It's a several hour process mm -hmm. to be able to 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 do that shopping. Not only getting where you're going, but then maneuvering through everything and finding what you need. So, it like I said, it is a process. The the material there is wonderful material to work with. It is good quality material. They have mm -hmm. good good products. Um, we can't get sewing machines there, so that's why mm -hmm. I take those in. I see. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, their material is fabulous. It's just but it's just a process that we are not used to doing because mm -hmm. we're just used to going to the fabric store and it has mm -hmm. everything, you, everything need. you need. Walk it all. Yep. Walk in. Walk bag. out with a bag, mm -hmm. and you're you're mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen in Haiti. And and you're there for more than just a day. These classes are, you were there for three weeks? I was there for three time. weeks. Classes, um, I have a three-hour class in the morning. Mm -hmm. I have another three-hour class in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And then on Saturdays, I have a three-hour class mm -hmm. with like 10, 11, 12-year-old girls to mm -hmm. get them used to using the machines. This um, Last year, they made bags. Mm -hmm. This year, they made uh, seam, uh pillowcases with French mm -hmm, seams mm -hmm. and then they just played with the machines it's it's something I want them to get comfortable with that machine used to doing it just sewing different little things you know mm -hmm. uh, scraps and whatnot to get used to that machine so that then they go on and then we sew something. Because they have to learn they have how to, to use You the have machine. to learn to use a machine. Yes. Yeah. And how yeah. to cut fabric uh -huh. and how to use the patterns and put it all mm -hmm. together. Um, and, you know, we're like that. We're, God took, you know, formed us with his hands, didn't mm -hmm. he? And then he blew his spirit and life into us. And so going and sharing that love is essentially, you know, just doing what God did for us. Yeah. And, and we're, we're a work in progress every you know, day. And, and, and playing with, with 14, you know, 10, 11, 12-year-olds on a Saturday morning, it's just fun as far as I'm concerned because I love kids too. Yeah. You know, How so, fun is that? So it was yeah, fun. Was I mean, I love the ladies as well. I mean, well, sure. And sure. Um, we got done the final day and... Uh, they had brought me a gift, and you know, I went to hug one of them, and I just basically I got mobbed. Uh -huh. You know, just it was just this great big, huge, like 16 people ball of of hugging uh -huh. because they all wanted to give me a hug, uh -huh. and they're all proud of when we when they sew whatever. I take a picture of each one of them in their dresses or whatever we are, uh -huh. you know, making because. And then they want to see it. They want to see yes. it, you know. And they're like, oh. And I'm like, you did a good job, you know. Really and that's that, that message. You can do it, and you did a good job. And this know? is part of Solonique's vision, what God had given him. To his his educate. vision. He wants to educate his people, uh -huh. you know. He wants to, to train them up. The, the, we have, each one of the churches has a school. Mm -hmm. um, 
the main church also has a vocational school. We have a Bible college. We have wow, a clinic. Um, last September, we opened up a radio station that reaches almost two million people. Yeah. Um, and no matter what the household, whether it's a Christian household or not, if they can find that station on the dial, they'll listen to it. So we are getting Jesus into the Christian homes, but we are also getting Jesus into the non-Christian yeah. homes yeah. to plant that seed. Amen. You know, and okay. water it till it, 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 it grows to, you know, and they, they accept Christ. Now, Bonnie, if you don't mind, let's talk about that a little bit because in some of the places you go, it's not without opposition to bring the love of God, is it, in Haiti? No, no. Haiti is a very large voodoo country. Mm -hmm. um, and they've claimed that for years mm -hmm. as their national religion, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, we don't understand that here in the States. But it is very real. I mean, there are witch doctors, there are voodoo priestess. And um, when they come to Christ, a lot of their family just says, you're dead, mm -hmm. you know. And it doesn't make any difference what age you are. Um, there is a little girl, her name is Naomi. And um, she was prayed over for like 48 hours straight because she was supposed to have been a voodoo priestess. Mm -hmm. That's what her family was raising her to be. Mm -hmm. And um, she came to Christ and her family basically said, you're dead, you, you're, you're dead. You have no clothing, you have no food, you have no housing, go away. So then she was taken in by Solonique and his family. She lives there at the house. And um, the uh, gentleman, Lukma, who prayed over her, God told her, you're now her father. You know, he's like 35 years old. And uh, so until he married, she lived at Solonique's. And they, um, but Lukma gave them money for her education, for her clothing, for her food. And mm -hmm. she calls him daddy. I mean, you know, she was like 14 years old, and what do you, I mean, you know, we come to Christ and we might have friends yes. that we shouldn't kind of associate with because it pulls us back away, mm -hmm. but we don't lose the way the foreign countries lose. Mm -hmm. I mean, when they decide to follow Christ, it's... Mm -hmm. It can mean it, their life. It, it can mean their it's very whole life, life in some countries. Yes, yeah. it is. You know, when yeah. you don't have any food, clothing, or shelter, yes. it's, yeah. a, it's a huge... And isn't it sad? We can, we can't hardly get people to come across the street, you know, to come to church. But when people, they're hungry for that word. And like this little girl, she, she basically uh, gave away the rights to her life and her family mm -hmm. to come to know Christ. And they have an appreciation. They do. Um, we have a church up in Marmalade, which is up in the mountains, and people walk for hours. Mm -hmm. Some of them will walk in the night before and sleep on the ground and go to church, and then they walk home then after church service. Because they're so Because they're hungry, hungry for God. Mm. They're hungry to know, you know, He loves me, somebody loves me, and they're hungry to learn about Him. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not a 45-minute church service. You know, it's a four-hour <laughs> church service, you know, and, and that's normal f for them, you know. Um, and I was, last year when I was down there, you know, of course, going to church, and even when they start to sing a song you know, like, How Great Thou Are, with all the, it's Haitian Creole, when they're singing that, you can't get the words. It's like, I know the words to this song. <laughs> and I was like, Lord, I, I want to praise you. I want to worship you. You know, how can, but I'm not, you know, I don't know Creole, and I'm not getting them out. And, and he said, open your mouth. And I'm like, and he said, open your mouth. And when I did that, I just started praising him in tongues. Wow. Singing. I mean, it was, uh -huh. it was, I was singing in tongues. And I was like, thank you, Lord. Yes. You know, because yeah. then I was a part of the service. And, and I had people comment on it afterwards of, they saw that joy come in. Mm -hmm. And I was like. That's just awesome that, wow. that you know. And God that wants experience. that for all of His children, doesn't He? He does. He He wants us to experience that love, and it it surpasses anything in the natural or the flesh that we could possibly mm -hmm. expect or want or or desire or know about. But when we ask, because you just ask, I just ask, Lord, I want to worship you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, I want to praise you, and He's like, open your mouth. Yeah. 
And he tells us that in the book of Psalms. Open your mouth and I will yeah. fill it, doesn't mm-hmm. he? Yeah. But you know, he needs he needs people that somebody when, when we've shared this before on the program that somebody said, Well, you know, Billy Graham wasn't always Billy Graham and you're like, What? And and you know, the implication wasn't famous, yeah. Yeah, that he wasn't always famous, but that what they meant was he was just simply somebody who kept saying yes mm-hmm. when God called. So God has called you four times to the mission field, and mm-hmm. I'm sure I, I spoke with John yesterday, and he said that he he was pretty sure he was going next year. Yes, so. yes, that's that's the game plan. The first year I went alone. The second year we went together. Well, he came down with me and spent two weeks, and he flew home, and I stayed another two weeks. Mm-hmm. And now these last next two years I went alone, and and the plan is for him to to come down with me next year. So we'll see how long we stay. So let's share with the folks at home how they can find out more about Living Water Christian Mission and how they can get involved. Maybe they feel a call on their life to volunteer, to go, uh, to support, to pray. So how how can they find that out? Um, www.livingwaterchristianmission.org and there is, is a place on the website there if they would like to make a donation. We also have a sponsorship program for the kids in the schools. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, yeah. so that, that helps with um, the tuition so we can pay our teachers mm-hmm. um, and books and papers and uniforms and all of that. Um, for the grade school kids, it's $30 a month, and for the high school kids, it's $50 mm-hmm. a month mm-hmm. um, because, you know, Lab mm-hmm. costs and whatnot are higher mm-hmm. for the for the high school mm-hmm. kids. So there's there's that program. So you can get involved, you know, kind of one on one with a child, mm-hmm. which is was oh, is a wonderful awesome. thing. Mm-hmm. I have a little girl down there. Her name is Anne, and uh, <laughs> she calls me Mama Bonnie oh. when I'm down there. And uh, she's oh. just she's just a beautiful, beautiful little girl. Melts your you know? heart, doesn't it? And and yeah. uh, it's it's just wonderful to have that that connection, you know. And and she. She told me before I left this year, she says, you know, you could build a house here. <laughs> you know, she wants me to stay, you know, so, so it's just that, that, you know, we don't speak the same language, but there's a love language there, Amen. you know. Um, so there's, you know, donations as far as to the mission, and you can donate to the mission for whatever you want, whether it's a building project, whether it's a, we have a beans and rice program at the main church or the main school that uh, the kids get a meal every day. Well, and some of them, that's the only meal they get. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times during the summer, then we will run a summer program. So instead of VBS like we have here for a week, they'll run it for like two months. And they feed those kids every day wow. during that as well, so that For they have months. they have a meal. Oh, yeah, a yeah. If two months VBS, yeah. we would go crazy. Yeah, we would. <laughs> I, I was just thinking, oh my goodness, because you know everybody gets excited about VBS. Day one, day two, we're all like, woohoo! Day three, we're like. <laughs> day and four and five were yeah, like, like oh. oh I'm tired yeah but yeah they <laughs> but do it all summer months, but they talk about summer. an investment oh yeah in, in the kingdom of God but and the kids know they come to the school even Saturday afternoons they're in the, the school compound because it's safe there they are mm. safe there they come mm-hmm. there and play they can play soccer they can play basketball and it's a safe place for them wow where they have room to to play and to grow and to be kids. Be kids, yes, to because be kids. they probably have so much outside of that when they have to leave that environment mm-hmm. and go back into their. So, the church is celebrating 15 years, 15 or years. just did? Just did. We just celebrated yeah, 15 yeah. years. We had um, approximately 2,000 people at the service. It was a four-hour service, yeah. and when they got done, everyone was fed. Wow. After the service, the ladies worked all night. They okay. started on Saturday afternoon, and they cooked uh-huh. all night and fed everybody after the wow. after the service, well, and which is that's a huge feat. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. You, you kind of think of Mary and Martha, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, all these yeah. people. So you know, but all for the glory of God, all, Amen. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, isn't it, Bonnie? It is. To you know, people think, what could I do? What what can't we do? And and it's one of those things of. You know, people are like, oh, I don't have a gifting from God. What is it you love to do? Mm-hmm, like you. Why does it have to be a struggle? Why does it have to be something we really don't want to do? I love to sew. God give me that love mm-hmm. of sewing and able to sew. And then I can take it and share it with somebody else. Mm-hmm. So take, you know, stop and think about what you love to do. 
God's given you that gift or that love for that whatever it is mm -hmm. and just share it. Amen. That's what it's all about, just sharing God's love. And, you know, I often think of the, the little boy with five loaves and two fish. You know, he, he, didn't, he didn't realize that giving just what he had, God was going to feed thousands no. with it. No. You know, but he was just willing to give. He was give. just willing to give, willing yeah. to love. Yes. And so if we're just willing to do, just say yes, and okay, God, uh, whatever it is that you see in me, that I can share. Be willing to share. And you know, on the other side of that, I just I just want you to know today that you've heard us talk about this loving God and He He truly does love you and loves you so much that He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to the earth uh, to give His life so that you could have life with Him, that relationship, that fellowship that we talked about that love. for all of eternity, Bonnie. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're watching the program today and you've never experienced that kind of love before, if you've never been introduced to, that, to the, the Jesus that we've been talking about who, who loves you and cares that much for you, Bonnie and I just want to uh, introduce you. We want to uh, tell you you don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops. The Bible just says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And what does that mean? That just means simply to ask Jesus to come into your heart. And, and whatever your past is, we all have one, don't we, Bonnie? We're no surprise. We all have a past. And just, just give it to him and just say, God, here I am. And, and you see everything in me. Forgive me. And I, I just want you to come into my heart and into my life, and I, I just want to give you my life back. And, and it's as simple as that, just calling Him Lord of your life. And, and you've heard how Bonnie just takes the gift that God has given her and what she enjoys, and then she takes that, and she shares that. Uh, and, and through that one thing that she's able to reach people and tell them how much God loves them. So today, if, if you're watching the program and, and you just made that decision to ask Jesus into your heart, we just want to say congratulations, don't we, Mom? Amen. Best decision a person could ever make. And I want you to know something. All of heaven right now is worshiping because of you. They're celebrating that you just came to God. And that you gave your life to Him. And, and now we want to encourage you to, if you don't have a Bible, get a Bible. And if you aren't able to get a Bible, then call the station. And we'll make sure that you get a Bible. And then we want to encourage you to, to start attending a church. A church that teaches God's promises and all of His love promises that He has said to you, for you, and about you. And then... Share what God has given with you and to you and for you with others. Just, just like what we've talked just, about. This program is about connecting people to the love of God. So with the love that God gives you, take that into the world and connect someone else. And how he does it, what he uses, is what's in your hands. So Bonnie, thanks so much for being with us today on the program. Thank you. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was. Be looking forward to hearing about your next trip. Okay. Thank you for joining us. God bless. Until next time. Contact us at Outreach Connection, WTJR 222 North 6th Street, Quincy, Illinois 62301. The Bible is unchanging and timeless, and its words are relevant for every generation. Join Dr. David Jeremiah each week on Turning Point as he delivers the unchanging Word of God to an ever-changing world. With his sincere, straightforward teaching style, David Jeremiah provides a rich study of Scripture from which you can find spiritual strength, encouragement, and guidance for today's world. Join Dr. Jeremiah every week on Turning Point right here on this station.